Hey, what's going on? You know what? I heard a caller on Jason Black's show. I don't know which show it was, but it was the other night. <laughs> I don't. Could have been Sunday. I don't know what it is. And that was the only glimpse or portion that I caught of it. She said that they were trying to kill us. And I said, damn, somebody else is seeing what I'm seeing. I mean, when you think about it, when have they ever stopped trying to? It's just that it's not possible to kill everybody. And I think YouTube will um, scramble out these words that they don't like anyway, because I've been watching those auditing videos. And I noticed that they've been scrambling out words. And as you, if you could recall, somebody pointed out that YouTube will scramble out words in my videos. So that's what they're doing. This was known as censorship. But um, that's what they need to have. Control of what you say, hear, and think. Then... They can spread the propaganda, brainwashing. Now, fortunately, we got a lot of coon agents out here who will coon out for a hot dog or whatever the fuck they need. Crack pipe. Weed. Whatever it takes. But whatever the case is, what a, aside from all events, let me t tell you what I was uh, looking at the other day. I, I got a new TV. I mentioned in the last video, OJ said the high sense brand was whack, and I agree. It used to be whack because I used to see them at uh, what was the name of that store? Wholesale National or National Wholesale Liquidators. I was I would go into that store and see high sense. I said, man, what the fuck is this? I said, if it's here, it's got to be cheap and no good. That's how I looked at it. And usually, you know, places like Walmart, they'll sell cheaper Samsung, LGs, and shit like that. The the kind with the lower features made for people who just want to watch shit and don't care about the technical uh, uh, shit and making sure everything is correct. But this Hisense U8K, they're supposed to be giving me a, a free game, too. I didn't get the code yet. <laughs> but, um... This one is for people who are what they call video files. Now, I've done the research over months because, uh, you know, I was like, I'm going from an LG, have five LGs. I said, damn, I'm, I'm fed up with this LG because, you know, something happened. So I said, God damn it, if I'm going to get a new one, I got to have upgraded features across the board. That go above and beyond what I had. This high sense this shit has this shit goes above and beyond. And I was uh, kind of uh, uh, skeptical about the the Google TV because I had a Sony TV one time a few years ago. I only kept that for a couple of days because that one didn't act right after two days. It had yellow lines on it. it. Had Google TV. HDR didn't look good. It was just so fucking dark. You couldn't adjust the shit. I said, man, damn. Had to return that shit. Stuck with LG. This high sense one. And I'm, I'm going to get to where I'm going. And why I'm talking about the TV. <laughs> because it brings me back to the main point. The blacks are black. The brights are very bright. In order to get HDR, you need, you need a minimum of a thousand nits. Most people have no idea what that's all about. You look it up. If you don't, I'm not about to explain that. But you need black blacks and a th at least a thousand nits for HDR. I think you need 10,000 nits for like Dolby Vision. In other words... If your TV is not a thousand nits or better or near it, 
you're not getting true HDR. And that that's what you were getting. You were getting fake HDR for most of the first few years of HDR. So that's why when I had early HDR, I was like, okay, darkens up the picture. Okay, it gives you more colors. Okay, but what they kept saying that you should be seeing, I said, I'm not seeing it. You know, it's not really blowing my mind. Because before I had me a, a the last LG 3D 4K TV, it didn't have HDR on it. And I did like watching shit in 3D. I ain't going to tell you no lie. But, of course, they got an end to that. I guess the next time they do 3D is going to be without the glasses. Last I heard, a few years ago, they were developing a TV to use without glasses. Haven't heard much uh, about it since. But, um, this TV does everything. It has next-gen uh, uh, TV tuner. Can't pick up one channel. New York is not... Believe it or not, New York has no next-gen channels because it's voluntary, but I figured I'd get it future-proof to shit. Watching all my movies, you got to watch all your movies again, man. I'm just telling you because every fucking thing looks mind-blowing. Now you're seeing it. If it's HDR, now you're seeing the shit the way it was meant to be seen. If you got TV with dynamic tone mapping on it for those who are into 4k if you take that off and you can hardly tell a difference you don't really see a change that's how you know you're getting the true HDR from your TV with the LG you hit dynamic tone mapping you're like ah damn this is, this is, you're blown away by the picture but you take it off and you're like oh shit you're like uh, fuck. Why is it so dark? I don't like this. But on this high sense, you you flip the switch. Either way, you're like, God damn. I was watching the Into... I didn't watch it all. I was just scanning Into the Dragon. It's $9 at Best Buy. I think it's still $9 at Best Buy 4K. I'd advise you to get that. They also got Rebel Without a Cause. I was going to get that, but I was like, damn, I got this shit on Blu-ray. I only watched the shit one time, so even at 10 bucks, I'm like, I don't know. I was just going to get it just to see how it looked. <clears throat> well, looking at the reviews, they didn't really say that it was above and beyond. Maybe if it's still there by the time this week is done, maybe I might get it, but I don't know. But anyway. It's watching that, watching skimming over Superfly. My mind was blown with that, and Superfly is a rough video. Like, the shit brings out details that you never saw before. Like that Superfly intro where he's ch chasing the uh, heroin addict, and he's chasing him across the street. All these times, I never noticed that until I saw it on this TV, that those were motorcycles that the man was running by. Never noticed it before on my other TVs. Bring out lights better. Everything. I, I'm, my mind is blown. I'm, and, and believe me, I'm trying to find reasons not to like the goddamn TV. But I can't find any reason not to like it. Just like the Koreans supplanted the Japanese, because Sony is the last Japanese maker of TVs. Now... The Chinese came up. They're about to take the Koreans out. Guess that's how it works. Most of the Chinese, they make the goddamn panels any goddamn way. Go on YouTube, watch some videos on how those shits are made. Because I was always curious how they make, make them. I still don't know how they make the individual pixels mass produced. That's what I really want to know. But, uh, because it's mini LED too. I'm telling you, man, you don't need an OLED with this one. To hell with an OLED. Now, I don't have a PlayStation or nothing to test that shit out with, but I'm sure that that shit would be spectacular. You could use this as a computer monitor if you wanted to, but I got mine in a different room. Anyway, the whole point of saying that. Is this, you know, in case you're interested in a new TV, I'm not getting paid, but 
this in theory should be the last TV you get unless they come out with a 10,000 10, nit TV. Uh, what else did I watch? I, I'm going to just tell you two more things I watched. I finished watching 1917, which I was trying to watch for the last few years. You know, I got to be in the mood for a war movie. But once I turned this shit on, I said, damn, this shit look way better than the LG. When I say way better, of course, they both got two, HDMI 2.1. Because the blacks, they just bring it up all out. Higher detail, richer color. But, um, you know, after I got through with the movie, I said, man, you mean to tell me this is what this shit was about? They said parts of it was based on a true story. Some Portuguese guy joined the uh, British Army and he supposedly did some of the things that was done. But, of course, the guy's uh, Mendes. That's the guy, or Alfred Mendes. You look at the real picture of the guy, you're like, Shit, that's supposed to be him in the movie. They damn sure put in a guy who I guess they wanted to be blonde hair, blue eyed white man because he's Portuguese. You know how it goes with the history. Well, if I don't look like a white man, but you know, if you're Portuguese national in Europe, what can you do? I don't know how he ended up in a British army, but you know, it is, it was what it was, but. Whatever the case was, after I saw that, I said, man, I thought this was a motherfucking war movie. Deleted that shit with the quickness. But the picture and the sound were good, though. Acting was pretty good, too. You know, British people do it over the, over the top sometimes. But And uh, one more. I watched that. Damn, I forgot the other one I watched. Anyway, fuck it. Let me just get to the point. Point was, LG, they got their own service, which I always thought theirs was the best. If you didn't have, like, cable or nothing like that, they got their own service. But then this Google TV shit, looking through that shit, I don't know what I missed on the Sony. I know this is a newer version and everything. But <clears throat> looking through it, I said, oh, shit. I said, this Google TV got the LG shit fucked up. Got the Roku up there. You don't need the Roku stick. <laughs> I was watching some of that Roku shit I know you can get that shit online too I was watching forensic files on that shit too I said damn they got the shit uncensored on this shit I said that's the way the shit needs to be All the censorship Bullshit I think it was American Justice or the other one he had uh, uh, I forgot the name of the other one But that, that used to show Uncensored shit on uh and he, you know, today they can't make shows like that. That's too much for them. All this censorship is fucking outrageous. But anyway, it's watching that. You can watch live TV and shit on the Google TV. Then you throw in, you can install the Pluto TV app. They had the Tubi up there. I prefer to watch the Tubi on my uh, TV because I mean on my computer because that way I can um, block the ads. Pluto TV, the the shows are uncensored there. Uh, that's I mean, you want to watch show, you got to watch them uncensored. That's what I like. At first, it was stuttering in the video. But then after that, once I restarted, everything was fine. Amazon, LG, they don't support HDR10+. And that's what Amazon Prime uses. So I was able to... Because I was watching Samaritan on the computer. Looked good on the computer, but you know, the computer, you can't really. I don't think they specify if it's Dolby Vision, HDR 10 plus or whatever. I don't, I don't think it supports any particular type. I think it's probably just the base of HDR 10. But anyway, on, on the uh, TV, it came up as HDR 10 plus, which is supposed to be comparable to Dolby Vision. But people don't support it because that's a Samsung creation. So competitors don't want to support that because it's like supporting Samsung. That's what Sony had to go through for years and years because Sony would make a format and other companies wouldn't want to support it because it's helping Sony out. 
But then Sony finally got one. Remember, Sony used to have the memory stick and some other shit. So that they could sell it. And be in control of the, uh, of the uh, technology. But Sony won with the Blu-ray. That's what they finally won on. Oh yeah, they, they had the Hi8 VCR back in the day. JVC beat them out on that. Now JVC is virtually non-existent. It's just down to, to projectors. Highly acclaimed projectors, by the way. But that's basically what they're down to. It's a shame, man. That used to be my brand, JVC. But uh, anyway, I'm satisfied with Google TV. I thought I would miss the LG uh, and their services. And I noticed the upgrade on the uh, update on the TV looked just like your update on the cell phone. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Anyway, I say all that to say this. I know some of you are going to be like, God damn, couldn't you just say it? Yeah, I could have. But then some people might want an explanation. I got to that point. So, while watching it was the Roku, I think it was the Roku, one of the two, I came across the Atlanta Child Murders show. This is the one that came out on HBO a few years ago. Now, I saw the first episode on HBO Max, the website or what have you. Matter of fact, I forgot I got this. I got free 30 days from this t from buying this TV. I got to see if it's a free 30 days with your card or a free 30 days without. Because if it's with, that's why I didn't even bother to register and sign up for it yet. Because you know how they like to bait you with that shit. I'm satisfied with the free shit. Unless it's cheap. And it removes all ads, then it's a different situation. But anyway, I first saw it on that a few years ago, I guess when it premiered or what have you, or after, or a year after it premiered. I said, damn, what do we need another? I think that's when the Wayne Williams shit was going up and, he, and they were interviewing, interviewing him and all that shit was coming back. And um, he was saying he was working for the CIA and all that kind of shit. I was like, what do they need to do another documentary for? And I say that with that Neil Curtis, American Justice, and the other one. I don't know why I forget the name of the other show. Because they seem to be doing new ones or newer ones on the same stories that they covered before, except that they take out the graphic scenes. I like to see the graphic scenes because you see the kind of sick shit that people do. I don't want to imagine what the fuck they do. I want to see it. Not because of some morbid curiosity, but because you can just see, so you can see just how sick people are. You know? But anyway, I was watching the Atlanta Child Murder uh, on HBO. I was shocked because I was like, damn, it's totally uncensored. I said, damn, I never saw that before. The Royal Bodies. But I only got to see the first part. And then they want you to sign up. So Roku had all three parts. So I said, let me watch this shit. But of course, it was censored when they showed the bodies. So I said, damn, I hate that censored shit, man. I mean, God damn, let the viewer make up their mind whether or not they want to see it. And you know how most people are who say, oh, I don't like that. I don't want to see that. They still watch it and they watch the shit knowing that the shit was going to be there in the first place. I hate those kind of people. If you really mean not to see the shit, don't watch the shit. Period. Don't tell other people what to look at and what not to look at. So anyway, I was watching it, listening to it all. You know, I'm sure a lot of you heard about the Ku Klux Klan uh, theory. On who was killing the kids. That was a lot of kids. I mean it was Atlanta. And I think. I'm not sure. But I think around that time. 70s. I think that's when Atlanta started getting black I guess. Uh, 
And of course, Georgia is a notorious state, racist state. But Atlanta has uh, changed the image. Then I was thinking with those coffins that they said that they had near Atlanta. You remember how agents tried to tell you to forget about that? That shit was all BS, but they were there. Then I was thinking about the COVID. And then I was looking at the evidence against Wayne Williams. Now, like a lot of people, they either set up or come to take the fall on something. You you start thinking, well, he looks like a creep. You you know, he looks like the type. He looks like he could be a, a homosexual and a crazed maniac. Only messing with kids, but not men. But then, as I was watching it, I said, damn, I didn't know this. I said, how did they allow this shit to happen? So they said they only char- he was only charged with the, the killing of the two adults. And of course, one of those adults, you know, he looked like, uh, you know, homosexual. So when they said fiber evidence matched, I- I'm not going to say... No, on the fiber evidence evidence because, you know, he had rugs and shit in the dog that just happened to be on the uh, bodies. Now you can say that they could have set his ass up because what I didn't know was... All he, had, all they had was the fiber evidence. A lot of times, that's enough to convict. What is this? That's enough to convict. What the fuck is this? Oh, you, you, yeah. <laughs> that just got me a fucking text. Damn, this is how they doing shit now? Fucking uh. Spamming uh, offers to you by text now. Car dealership and shit. Come on. Anyway. Fiber evidence. Okay, I, I can accept that. That he could have taken out the adults. And then he had the, the, the studio shit. And he had age an age range of kids. That he wanted to exploit their talents with or from. That's suspicious because a lot of the predators, they like being around what it is that they're looking for. And that was a specified age group. And you see a lot of the predators, they go become preschool teachers and all this kind of shit. If they're gay, you know, they want to hang around, uh, 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 what, what do they do? Uh, the dancing world, fashion world, bodybuilding. I know some people might say bodybuilding. Hey, you know, they want to see what they want to see. Uh, and females, you know, they uh, try to entice other females uh, by talking that feminist shit and, and a whole bunch of other bullshit to uh, act like uh, females got to get together on, on something. And you know the main thing they're looking to get together on. Uh, so all that kind of shit. So I can see he killed the two adults. Let me just go with that. But what I didn't know. And this is <clears throat> the FBI. And investigators on the case saying this shit. I didn't know that he was never charged with killing one child. They only pin the the kid, uh, most of the kid kids deaths on him after he was already on trial for killing the two guys. Or was it a female and a guy? Or they were adults, whichever the case was. I said, how the fuck? Now we know people have been railroading people, especially black people for the longest time. But I mean, how do you get away 
with a guy is on trial for uh, two crimes. And then you say, well, we'll just throw 15, 20 other people, other uh, murders onto him too. After, without charging them. <laughs> now I said, now that's pretty strange. I didn't know that shit. I, I'm like, how, how can you do that? And how does the government let that happen? But back then, it was a big sensation, apparently. So, they needed a face, like like any event. Whether it's government-related, or government cause, or, or whatever. They need a face. JFK, I gotta bring that up. Gets killed. The face is Lee Harvey Oswald. 9-11, the face is Bin Laden. Malcolm X gets killed. The man who was captured, he's the face. And they make sure the face is not Louis Farrakhan or Elijah Muhammad. Newtown, Adam Lanza is the face. But of course, we never hear from him. Some say he didn't exist to begin with. And from what I've seen, I'm inclined to believe that. And his mother, that whole shit was BS. Anyway, Wayne Williams looks like he was the face of that Atlanta child murders. Because that was a whole lot of killings. All black. Those two adults, you could say, okay, there might be some gay shit going on with that. Even some of the teenage boys, you can say, hey, man, who knows? <laughs> but what I'm saying, shit is fucking crazy. And I think back to when I was like seven, eight years old, as far away from home, I was traveling on a bike or a tricycle. <laughs> yeah, I was riding. I think I was riding one of those at seven. Uh, skateboard, well, you know, all types of shit. Picture that shit right now, going down a fucking hill with one leg. <laughs> Um, on my knees on a skateboard. This shit used to be fun, but fucking dangerous at the same time when you're going fucking fast and then you're like, how the fuck am I going to stop? <laughs> I forgot how we stopped. I think uh went into the grass and made sure not to hit a tree, of course. Or try to put... Uh, I forgot. I, I know. I, I, I'm sure we, got, we crashed a few times on that shit. This shit was fun, but scary. But I think about... You think about those little kids, how many times I asked strangers for a quarter or some shit like that. Uh, you know, we, we you know how kids, your kids, uh, you got a quarter, mister, all that kind of shit. And to think, you know, I probably could have been kidnapped, assaulted, and, and, and left in a trash uh, dumpster. That type of shit. Of course, never crossed my mind as a kid, you know? I knew there were criminals out there, but I didn't know that there were deviants and, and crazed maniacs like that, you know? Uh, so it's crazy. So you think about those kids getting caught out like that. I keep thinking to myself, damn, how'd they lure these, 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 lure these kids everywhere? And usually... It's money, candy, or the prospects of something that they might want or some shit like that. But they did say that the police were standing over a bridge or under a bridge and they saw his car was the only car that came out after a body was dumped. And then the fibers matched. So, but they didn't take him in at that time for some odd reason. But, um... I think I thought about that. And then I was saying to myself, you know what? 
what the fuck else was going on around that time? And I was like, then you had the Jim Jones situation. And people make it more than clear that the Jim Jones situation, he was CIA. That's not speculation. That's clear. He was, uh, clearly, that was clearly a mind control uh, experiment. Then I think about who were the primary victims of Jim Jones. And they were black people. Then. I think about. Damn. Mind control. Experiment. People killed themselves. Or made them kill themselves. Or in, in some cases they killed them. And why did it have to be mostly black people? Now, if a lot of you follow cults or even just the church, <laughs> you'll notice that there are a lot of black people who prefer a white or white style preacher. I don't know if those are the mentally ill black people or not, but whatever the case is, they prefer those kind. And like lemmings, they'll fall off a cliff for these people, just like Jim Jones. I don't consider him all white because you, you can just look at him and see, but might as well call him white, I guess. And um, then the fuck are you looking at? So then <laughs> hey, well, motherfuckers just stop and start looking at you. They start thinking I'm looking suspicious. They, shit, they look black person this time. They don't want to look suspicious. Then, hey, let me tell you something real quick since this shit just came out. I was walking down the fucking hallway, coming into the place. White lady going to do the see me and do the cross thing on, you know, that cross sign they do. I'm like, man, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? That's supposed to mean God watch over you, hoping this Negro don't try to kill you. I'm like, again, I mean, then do I, I mean, do I look that scary? 6'4", I'm not 7'4", but goddamn, People get scary. But anyway, think about the Jim Jones shit. Mind control experiment. Then, that's concerning black people. Then the Atlanta child murders. Matter of fact, I think those were happening right, right at the same time. Even though the Jim Jones shit got set into motion years, years earlier, about 10 years or so earlier. I think more than that, probably about 15, 20 years or so earlier. Because like I said before, mind control works. They know if you're into religion, <clears throat> you're more susceptible to mind control. Because they figure you're believing something that somebody told you about that you can't verify. And they're telling you how to act in regards to this something. So they figure if you're that gullible, then obviously... Oh, this is it. Oh, so then obviously you would be somebody who can be brainwashed. So they change shit around. So anyway, they 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 go find these people. And they did what they did. And they also had the guys of unity mixing uh, blacks and whites together, which, of course, didn't seem to matter too much because they ended up killing everybody, almost everybody. And um, so you had that mind control 
resulting in death. And there are a lot of examples of cults in that regard. You can throw them all in the same boat. Then you had the Atlanta child murders. Prior to both of these things, you had Nation of Islam, because that's a part of this government shit too. And that brainwashing aspect and getting people to go out and kill. Other kooky shit like the Moors and you know, all these other shits that that's just wacky. Then of course you had civil rights, that was terrorism. You had black people getting killed and terrorized and the killers, white killers just going to court. Even though the evidence is overwhelming, they get found not guilty. Just because that's the way it is. There's no justice that that that's the government going along with state sponsored terrorism of black people. Then, you can go back to segregation, slavery, and as I was watching 1917, I noticed that they threw an Indian Sikh in there, gave him a prominent role, not throughout the movie, but for that scene, just to let it be known that they fought on the British side. During World War One, And yes you can find pictures of them doing that. With the turban. Then they show on the battlefield a few presumed Africans. They could have been Jamaicans. But I'm going to say presumed Africans because it's World War One. And then I was saying to myself. They had black people fighting their wars. But, especially in the U.S., fighting wars, you got Germanic brother against Germanic brother, one trying to dominate and control, maybe that's a sport to them. You go over there, put your life on the line, whether it's for the pay or what have you. Come back, you're a nigger. Stay in the hood. Can't go here, can't go there. And you know how I feel about the black entertainers. Couldn't go here, there, and wherever the fuck they wanted, but they had to entertain and shit. That's fucked up. Non-stop terrorism. So you add all the shit from the beginning. Let's see, what did you have after... I tell you, the 70s, that was a putting you to sleep decade. Because they've kind of capped off the 60s with killing Martin Luther King. Capped that shit off. The Kennedys had to go. Martin Luther King had to go. Even though Martin Luther King was an agent of the Small Hats, who was running this whole shit, by the way. That's why they train coon agents to say, It's white, just plain old white people. When you try to specify who's running the show, it's all white supremacy. Well, there are hierarchies and there are specified groups. If you say who was the catalyst for World War II, hell, for World War I too, are you going to say white supremacy or are you going to say it was Germany? And you know what? Since I brought out World War One and Two, you can't say it was Nazi Germany either, because World War One wasn't about Nazi Germany, because that didn't exist. <laughs> but that's another topic for another day. So you had the seventies was the put you to sleep decade with the disco, cocaine, black exploitation movies. 
make you forget about the 60s. Make you forget about how you've been done wrong. But even with those movies that made black people feel proud, as you know, Richard Roundtree just passed away. And I forgot I had the, the Shaft TV shows, which is actually bad quality, but is actually issued by Warner Brothers, but it looks like it came off of cable TV. Shame on Warner Brothers, but that's the only way it can get done. I ain't about to go on, uh, I say I ain't want to go online trying to hunt down shit that I may not be able to hunt down, you know? But I didn't know about the Shaft TV sh uh, series. But I said, let me get this shit anyway. Because I forgot, even though it's softer, because it's TV. I said, damn, I forgot that he had the three Shaft, mo Shaft movies and all these uh, TV shows. I don't know if they're two hours long or one hour long. I usually just skim through them because the, really the picture quality is kind of bad. But one I was looking at last night. Which intrigued me. It showed the, the ending from Shaft's big score. And they were watching it on TV, on the news, saying this is what happened. They don't know the whereabouts of this, that, and the other. I said, oh, okay. So they had a little tie-in to that. I said, so let me let me check that shit out. I didn't watch it, though. <laughs> Picture quality is horrible. It's a burned-out Blu-ray, but it's officially by Warner Brothers. I don't know why they did it. I guess it's short run. Now, if they put that shit right on Blu-ray, because it's on DVD, not Blu-ray. They put that shit right on Blu-ray. I buy that shit. Especially since the man is gone. Other thing I noticed, too, in, in the Shaft movies, the reason why, you know, you know it's old, but it doesn't look like other 70s movies because his afro wasn't round. You know, it's kind of like, you know, almost like the 80s rappers uh, type of hairdos, almost. But in this TV show, I noticed that his afro is more rounded. <laughs> like a 70s afro. So, that was the put you to sleep decade. Then once the Atlanta child murders, Jim Jones, late 70s, start hitting. That's when they got back to business. This is what we really want. Then in the 80s, what else happened? Crack cocaine. AIDS. It's back on. Still targeting your black ass. Our black asses. And what are black Freemasons doing? I, I, I got to call them out because what are you doing? What is it? The ones in the know. What is it? What are you doing? Looking the other way. Like I tell you, Mayor Tom Bradley, Los Angeles. Freemason. When black people are getting beaten down, killed by cops. He was in control. What did he do? Nothing. But they credit him with giving L.A. a skyline. As a Freemason. That Philadelphia mayor with the move situation. He was the mayor. But the Italian cops were in control. So I guess he was just a puppet. Don't tell me that's what black Freemasons are. Just puppets for white supremacy. Because they apparently can't do what the fuck they want to do. If JFK couldn't do what the fuck he wanted to do, apparently they can't. So you're dealing with crack, you're dealing with AIDS. I'm trying to think what else happened in the 80s. Gangster rap music. That's mainly, that was really throughout the 90s, but it really got started in the 80s. Talking nothing but negativity, killing. Uh, fucking bitches, fucking hoes, slapping a nigga, killing a nigga, guns. I handle business with guns, selling drugs, doing drugs, stay high, right? <laughs> These are all brainwashing things put out by Negroes. I was going to do a video on it, but I'll do a little bit bit about what I was going to do. Maybe somebody else can go through. Maybe somebody else already did it. For all, I, for all I know. But you think about the record labels. 
See, the small hats trick you, not all of us. They get the, what's the best way to describe these people? Ringleader, uh, slave catcher, pimp, that they call moguls. See, when they call them moguls, that means rich guy, at least that's what you think. It means rich guy who has money and is uh, strong in business. But when you find out that they're real only businesses, the small hat gave them money to go round up some rappers and tell them, talk about this, talk about that, and don't you dare talk about this shit. Rappers take pictures with guns, drugs, got the music video, I'm calling them all out. The good rappers and the bad rappers. <laughs> Even Wu-Tang Clan. Cooking up rock on the, on the stoves. Mob Deep. All these uh, in the names of the groups. The names of the rappers. Pimp C. Pusha T. <laughs> Killer This. Uh, uh, Mob Boss That. Whatever the fuck you want to call them. Can't even think of some names right now. Uh... I mean, the songs went from dance, move your body, and all that kind of shit to battling with, uh, yeah, niggas got to die tonight. I'm just making some shit up. You know, those type of songs. Niggas want to die. Niggas want to try. Niggas going to fry. You think about this. You think about not only yourself, but mentally ill black people out here serial killer types those are the kind who like killing the nigga because the songs are telling them you gotta kill a nigga that's how you handle your business a nigga get out of line lay him down cash money records I see BG got out of prison came back with some new shit sound alright and he got the jail body went in skinny had to, he had to get pumped or else he would get pumped, <laughs> you know. But um, let me investigate some more of his material. Hell, BG, that's a prime example too, baby gangster. <laughs> but Cash Money Records, the small hats put these guys out and put some of the faces uh, of these guys out there. And they had these guys jerk these people off. Sometimes it might be figuratively, sometimes it might be actually, but definitely jerked them off from the money. Death Row, Bad Boy. Those are all criminal names. What's another one? What's the uh, J Prince shit? What's that shit? The other one, Murder, Inc. Why did they have to have those names? And why did they have to be focused on nothing but murder rap, gangster rap type shit? Only. Fifty Cent names himself after a uh, stick-up kid. To praise that type of person. N.W.A. Niggas. With attitudes. The C.P.O. <laughs> Minister Society. The movie and that song. Minister Society. Take your grandmother's social security. Son of Mephisto. All that kind of shit. Migos. Stir fry. <laughs> you know, it's always the same topics. Even if they put the shit in a more friendly sounding way, it's the same topics. To keep you, keep people in a certain state of mind. 
drugs, get high, get you some drink, smoke some weed, pop some X, Rick Ross too, Let's pop some X, do drugs, stay high all day, never, this is how you do the business, the moguls don't even tell you how to start a fucking record label, and as you see, without the small hats, they can't do nothing on their own, and of course the music biz is dead, that's why these guys aren't needed. Now, it's funny how vinyl is out selling the uh, uh, fucking uh, CD. Even though the vinyl these days comes from a digital source, not an analog source like the old vinyl. That's why the old vinyl sounded the way that people liked, I guess, because it came from an analog source, uncompressed. Now the shit comes from a digital source. In case people didn't know. But I always hated records though. But people beg for the DJs beg for the vinyl. Anyway. So you had the rap. And the crack cocaine. You combine the music. With mentally ill Negroes. Because people get high. When you stay high. You're drinking. Fetal alcohol syndrome. Crack babies, even the weed, all these chemicals. Once they're in, into your body, shit starts changing. And of course, your babies become chemicalized. I'm trying to be funny, but at the same time, this shit ain't funny. See, so kids are getting affected by that shit. And they come out sick and aggressive. Just watching the first 48 the other day on uh, YouTube. On the A&E channel. I think it was the A&E. Yeah, the A&E channel. Episode I apparently missed. They had a uh, uh, very aggressive guy. I think this was Birmingham. Guy just got out of prison three days ago. And then he just shoots and kills a guy. For no reason. Then starts talking about fighting the police. And talking about, I don't want to go back to the prison. Please, I don't want to go back. Why'd you kill the guy? Why are you so aggressive? Mentally ill, and he wasn't smart. He confesses to the murder. No one, you going to prison. I mean, I, I guess he felt, oh, they got some shit on me. Let me just try to say, you know how they do. Oh, let me claim self defense. How about not doing the shit in the first place? I mean, and, and I think in the same episode, two hoes set this guy up to get robbed. And then they. Two guys killed them. One black man killed. Another one was beaten. Four black people sent to prison. Not for life. The The guys, they gave them like 30 years or whatever. 24, 30 years. Females got around 15. Females almost always get off. Which is fucked up. So... Oh, oh yeah, I'm holding it right. Thought I was holding it wrong, but uh, now that guy should have known better than to meet some ratchet type hoe. I know he was thinking I'm about to get me some pussy tonight, but when you just meet a female, they don't really know your name or care about your name, and um. They're like, come and see me. When are you coming to see me? She called him nine times in that same day. Come see me. Motherfucker, he saw you when he got the number. Got to use your brain. Ask her, why do you want me to come over right now? We just met. I might want to fuck you, all that kind of shit. You hear that kind of shit, most guys going to be thinking, oh, shit. Let me go do this. See, people like me, trust me, I went on, trust me, online hookups, trust me. I was always cautious, but I tell them where I'm from. I ain't going to tell you no lie, motherfuckers get shook. And I noticed that shit. See, to me, where I'm from, <laughs> it was just, it's just the way things were. But, when you tell these other people who are trying to be hardcore for uh, no reason, 
Motherfuckers get shook. <clears throat> Even if they were thinking about doing something, they stop thinking about it. <laughs> and a lot of times I would bring somebody with me and, and, you know, and say, hey, man, hook this man up too. Sometimes I go by myself, but I'm always cautious. I'm always, this is what I always did. I always said, I go to the place as if I would be robbed. So I only bring $20 in cash on me. That's it. Then they say, give me your money. $20, that's all I got. Take it or leave it. Never happened. But like I said, there were a couple of times where it looked like something was in the works. Like one time I went to this hole that I met online. <laughs> she was living in the projects. I said, damn, I, I usually don't like doing this project shit. And there's other guys hanging with you. He didn't give a fuck. Where they lived at. Because the only thing on his mind was getting some pussy. Went there at night. You, know, you got to scope around, scope the scene, see who's looking, see who's hiding, see, you know, see it all. Because if you don't, you can get got. Don't go there thinking uh, with a one track mind, thinking I'm just getting me some pussy. You better think about every goddamn thing. Who's moving? Who's in the car? Uh... Listen to who's talking. Listen to how aggressively they're talking. Look at phones being operated on and, and, and texting going on. That's another thing with females too. Got to watch them with, when they're on their phone. Don't, don't this just think, oh, well, you know, people text. And it's innocent. Nah, man, you got to think, why are they texting when I'm here? And who are you texting? If you're really into me and you're ready to get it on, you ain't going to be worried about uh, texting nobody. But anyway, he, he he slipped and he, you know, unfortunately, he, he got ended. And, um, you know, that's black man down for people for the black people in prison. Typical on the first 48, unfortunately. Unfortunately, but that's 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 typical. So you got the rap music contributing to this type of mindset. That's the 90s plus the, you know, crack wars and all that shit. I was looking at something online. It said, I didn't read it, but they said the 90s, the, the most deadliest decade. And that's true. I mean, Los Angeles now. New York now, Chicago, not, not Chicago now. I mean, Chicago now is, you know, got that rep now, but LA in the nineties, I was like, damn, I said, it's like that, you know, it was like urban warfare, Crips and Bloods. I still couldn't quite figure out what the fuck they were fighting over, but you know, it's like Tim Dog said, having that gang war, we want to know what you're fighting for. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true because I was always like, "What the fuck are they fighting over?" <laughs> I mean, if they, I mean, what you fighting over a beat that happened what early seventies and shit between some other motherfuckers? I mean, that shit doesn't make sense. <laughs> but you know, that's all you heard about with L.A. Man, murder after murder after murder. Now it seems to be calm. You know, there's murders everywhere, but. That's what you had. 2000s, what you have. I guess they kicked off the decade with 9 11. <laughs> and still the gangster rap. Even though people started making more dance, shake your ass uh, 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 songs and that type of shit. But still, nothing really respectful. When they lost the labels because the music biz is dead. You know, they lost a lot of their ability to brainwash people, the youth in particular. So that's why they use social media. The 20, what was it? The 20 teens, what did they do? What was the thing that they were doing in the 20 teens? Oh yeah, don't forget too, in the 90s, They had movies, you know, positive movies, and they were brainwashing you to the African shit. That's what they were doing in the 90s. 
in the 70s with the black exploitation. Black people, from what I gather, because I got to do research and see videos and shit. They say that black people were proud to see those movies and see black people in heroic uh, parts. Now, I like them because, you know, it's a good time capsule, so to speak. You can see how things were. And, of course, the clothing is fucking unbelievable. <laughs> you know, the only way you could believe motherfuckers are running around wearing shit like that is to watch the goddamn movie. But <laughs> if they didn't watch the mo if they didn't have the movies, I'd be like, I couldn't believe it. Big ass cars and shit, all types of shit. The wild hair dudes, all types of shit. But what do you see in most of those movies? Made by small hats or produced by small hats. In some cases, written by small hats. Black men are drug dealers, drug addicts, and criminals abused by white people. Non-small hat white people, by the way. Black women are always hookers, strippers, and giving up pussy as soon as they meet somebody. And drug addicts, too. And occasional lesbians. The black hero, like a shaft, he, and he did this in real life, apparently, wasn't a true man. Until he fucked the white woman. He, you, you, if you notice in Shaft, especially in Shaft in Africa, he used the black woman <laughs> for sex, housing, and whatever, you know, like what black guys do. Now, he used the white woman like that too in, in the Shaft in Africa, but. When they have them deal with the white woman, it's supposed to be love and all that kind of shit. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing, too. Rap music and black exploitation. They had black men calling their women bitches and hoes and shit. Almost every black... That's why my man made the Hollywood Shuffle. Almost every black exploitation movie, you see some black guy wearing some ridiculous outfit. <laughs> and, um... Talking some gibberish. Yeah, man. What it look like? Now nah, I'm saying, brother. All that kind of, you know, that crazy shit that. That's why I'm glad my man made Hollywood Shuffle. Because <laughs> if he didn't explain that shit, a lot of people would be lost, man. Because that shit is real. I told you that movie, uh, The Black Godfather. That's a prime example of a Hollywood Shuffle type shit. If you ever track that shit down. Because they cast a well-spoken guy that was clearly educated. I think he was a classically trained actor. To play a, a, a drug dealer in the hood. But he's, he's so well-spoken it doesn't really come off as legit. So that's what they do. And then I, I just say. and and So they had negativity. In the 70s with the prideful movies. Then in the 80s. Matter of fact, this still went down in the 70s. A lot of times it was Italian gangsters against black people. So the small hats try to make it look like the Italians were keeping black people down when it's actually the small hats. Because they want to make it look like it's the Italian mafia that's running organized crime when it's the small hat mafia. Trust me, do your research, you'll find that the small hats totally control the Italian mafia. And they put them in the places that they wanted them to be at. Without the small hats, the Italian mafia couldn't have done shit. I'm telling you, don't think that a few guys with guns are going to be able to terrorize fucking local governments with police departments. And say, do this or we'll shoot you. And back then, FBI and all that shit, they were out killing. They weren't arresting, they were killing. Of course, J. Edgar Hoover was on the take 
as they say, but I think his real thing was, since he was a Freemason, he had to let the, the mafia do what they had to do because that was a part of the small hat scheme to take, to control the underground economy and then control business segments that they couldn't take legitimately or couldn't buy. Because if nobody could sell, because you know that's what they do, if you don't sell, they take. Because the bankers got all the money, so they figure, hey, we're offered these, these people some money. And some people probably said, no, I'd rather have my business instead of some money. Oh, is that so? So then they, they bring in the organized crime. Because the organized crime alone, with the gangsters and shit, that can't get the job done. It's the connection with the government, FBI, and the police. That's why the government looks the other way with when hits take place. They say, damn, I guess it's a it's a gangster war. Which is cold for we're not gonna try to solve who killed these people. It's between criminals. But yet when it's a serial killer or a lone hood guy, oh yeah, they'll get him. And that's another mistake these Negroes make. They think, oh, well, I'm selling drugs. I'm gun toting. When I go to uh, forward uh, uh, before the police, I'm gonna act like these uh, mafia guys in in the movies. You coppers ain't got nothing on me. Fuck all you. That only works when you're connected. That doesn't work when you're by yourself. <laughs> so that's why the shit doesn't work. Do your research on organized crime and ask some questions and you'll come up with some answers, even if you can't find the answers on Google. But that's what they did in the 70s movies and then in the 80s movie, also in the 70s movies. You called every fucking name possible, kook, I mean, coon, nigger, jigaboo, all types of shit. In the 80s movies. It wasn't necessarily black exploitation, but they had black guys, the 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 buddy uh cop movies, they always had a black person in the movie. And things changed obviously from the beginning of the eighties to to the end of the eighties. Once you start getting to the nineties, that's when you had what I call black man rise material. You know, the koofies, the African shit, the boys and the men type shit. Not the boys in the in the men, the boys in the hood type shit. And um all that kind of shit. But in the 80s, keep in mind, while the 80s was going on, you had the Atlanta child murders, the crack, and the AIDS. Keep in mind, the AIDS and the crack and the Atlanta child uh, murders, they all came out around the same time. Keep that in mind. Shit ain't a coincidence. And every time something goes wrong in the U.S., it's always blamed on the black uh, person. But in the movies, I cringe when I watch a lot of 80s movies. Because what do you get? Racism all the time. Uh, somebody such and such uh, is a nigger. But he's a Negro. I don't know. He's black. Hey, brother. How's it going? All that kind of shit. See, the average person is thinking damn white people are racist but see me I always thought well who put these movies together who made them and I tell you this I watched that Peeping Tom movie British whether it's in the UK or the US look at the executive producers and the producers always small hats they control the shit that's why you never see an Egyptian pharaoh movie with all black people that's why Will Smith can't come out with the Nubian uh, pharaoh movie that he kept saying he was coming out with but he can come out with a slap which was fiction too I hope people still don't believe that shit was real That Hannibal movie they were supposed to come out with. Still didn't come out with that. 
Even though I was surprised the A and E show showed him, uh, I mean the History Channel show, uh, show showed him as uh, black. But like, uh, that's another thing I notice in movies too. Because if you look at what's that shit, the Fifth Element, anything with black people in it, and they don't want them to be black. They always do something with the hair, either cut it off or make it some wild cartoonist type cut to take uh, away from the people being black. If you notice that shit, that's what I noticed. But with white people, they can just have whatever hairdos they have. So. That's what a lot of and eighties movies were very violent too. By the way, I think those are probably the most violent movie, uh, violent decade for movies. Period. Because now you get censored shit. But those fucking eighties movies, like I said, that's why I always bring up Commando. Because you want to talk about a extreme, a violent movie to the extreme <laughs> for the eighties. Commando is that movie. And then you can go into Scarface. <laughs> Uh, what's that other shit? Uh, fucking Toxic Avenger, <laughs> all that shit. Those shits were fucking violent to the extreme. I mean, they were violent like crazy. Uh, but that's what's going on. See, when the entertainment hits, the real life shit is going on underneath the surface. That's why today's movies is all about propaganda and the Marvel shit, the female shit, Mexicans, homosexuals uh small hats feeling sorry for the small hats all that kind of shit but see the covid that's that's what i'm going back to they are trying to kill us that's what it seems like because they never stop fucking with us that's that's for certain covid that was another mind control experiment to get you to panic and say to yourself, God damn, there's something out here who can, that can kill me. But at the end of the day, did it? You got people on YouTube who claim to have lost family members, but when they claim that the time period where they claim that they lost them, they were still doing videos and uh, they didn't seem like they lost anybody to me. They still seemed, uh, you know, their normal selves. They didn't say like, oh man, my, my parents, my cousin. Oh fuck, I can't go on online no more. I can't do it anymore. That's, that's normally what people like when people die. They're, they're like, man, fuck this. I can't do this shit anymore. This, this, this YouTube shit is petty. But instead, people are like, I, I lost my whole family to COVID. Uh, so, yeah, on tonight's show, we're going to be doing this, that, and the other. I'm like, man... Who the fuck does that? All these stunts involving black people. Family members supposedly killed by cops. You can see that the shit is Hollywood production. As soon as the shit happened, they're on CNN. Hardly crying. And matter of fact, they're acting like nothing happened. Oh, CNN. Okay, I'm on CNN. Yeah, Jimmy was a great guy. Oh, man, he was he, he, he was lovely. Lo lovely attitude. We miss him dearly. And, uh, whew. We can't get over how this happened. Not one teary eye. Not one emotion. We got TVs. We got neighborhoods. Well, motherfuckers are found murdered. The last thing motherfuckers want to do is go talk to the media and be cool. It's the last thing they want to do. Matter of fact, they don't even want to be bothered. And the first thing that they start doing, I don't want to say acting a fool, <laughs> but they start going sick. What is this guy doing staring at this guy's car for? It's 
Uh, you never know what people are out doing these days. I don't know if he was out trying to do something. Then he sees me, because the way I hold the phone looks like I'm recording. Oh, okay, I think he's waiting for somebody else. Okay. All right, so anyway. So you never know these days. That's why you, you got to keep your eye on people. <laughs> White, black, you know, you never know what the fuck they are to. But, um... Most of these white people in here, they, they think I'm I'm about to do something. I like I said, I, I let them get scared, they get nervous, let them get nervous. Fuck it. That, that's not it's not my job to comfort them. Fuck them. But you see how it is when Daquan gets killed. The mother's like, Man, why did this have to happen? Why? Shaking, crying. But these phony events. They can't bring out these emotions because they're not hiring Denzel Washington to do this shit. They're hiring Freemasons. They can't bring out the, the great emotions that's, that's needed to convince anybody other than a dimwit that this shit is real. And whatever the fuck the point is, I wish they hurry up and get to the motherfucking point because I'm tired of this shit. If there's a point, I hope the point is leave black people the fuck alone. And return to black glory or something like that. I hope that's the point. Because right now it doesn't look like that is the motherfucking point. Just from what the way I look at things. Fucking, I was just reading an article about a uh, fucking Indian guy uh, having to sell off some uh, Burger Kings and shit. I think he had 3,200 Burger Kings and shit. And he was losing money. I said, damn, another fucking Indian all this fucking hidden money. Where the fuck they getting it from? How come nobody's stopping these motherfuckers from rising? In this country. That's why I told you I don't want to hear nothing about China being an enemy. I don't want to hear nothing about Russia being an enemy. I don't want to hear nothing about Iran being an enemy. Because Iran, you look around where the fuck you from, I guarantee you. You're going to find you some Persian rug shops somewhere. And some other uh, fucking eateries or some shit by uh, some Iranians. And they're classified as white in this country too, by the way. So I don't want to hear nothing about no enemies. I don't want to hear nothing about no Hezbollah, Hamas. I don't want to hear nothing about no uh, they're terrorists. I don't want to hear none of that shit. Because they let them come here. That's why they call it an American dream. Because when you come here from another country, you get the motherfucking dream. But when you're a black American, you don't get the dream. Matter of fact, before I go on with other shit, this might be two hours for all I know. On my Facebook, some of you may have known about the story. I just came across it, even though those faces look familiar, though. You had people <clears throat> who worked at a bank. Amelia Bassoon and Joshua Baswami worked at a bank, found out some mentally impaired guy had a lot of money. I don't know why these white people were living in the hood when the cops said they had far more than 50000 in their bank. But they saw the money. They said, we got we to gotta get our hands on this shit. Took the money, they got found out by the people, but not necessarily by the bank, but you know how banks are. They'll take their time once they conduct the, the thorough investigation. Bottom line is, those people didn't want to get caught. They tried to pay the people off with a little bit of money. And they, they, they decided the best option was to kill them. Two people. And in the interrogation room, I noticed that the husband was saying, I'm a brown guy. Then he said something about some black guy with a hoodie. Some black guy. Then he said the victims were some white people. He said he's a brown guy. I said, these motherfuckers with this brown bullshit. We ain't brown, nigga. You're black. Also on my Facebook, I think I put it up. These people from Guyana, by the way. East Indians out of Guyana. I think... If you read up, I think they took over the motherfucking country. I got to say, these Indians, we are they smarter or more cunning or more cutthroat? But I, I can't help but notice 
They call Guyana the Caribbean for some odd reason. But I can't help but notice the Caribbean and Guyana, these East Indians run the show over the so-called African types. Can't help but notice that. <laughs> but they call he called himself Brown, but on the arrest record, he and his wife are put list put are put down as black. And I said, damn, is it because they are black or is it because you want to add a double homicide into black crime statistics, black American crime statistics? Which is what they do. I guarantee you if those Indians would have been, and it goes to show also, even if they're from the Caribbean, they still see themselves as Indians because they got their original names in most cases. And cultures, even though if you listen to the interrogation, they're all selling drugs, taking drugs, and using guns, and obviously killing people. <laughs> so, if they do what that guy did to own the Sacramento King, Shad Khan, and all these other people, owns the Jaguars, and this guy owning these Burger Kings and Dunkin' Donuts and Popeyes, they're not black now. That doesn't get listed as black because now that would be counted as black wealth. But if the white man wanted to get slick, he could add them in as black as far as education and wealth. And then claim that black people are doing extremely well. Even when we're not. If you want to get slick like that, maybe you ain't think about it. Maybe I shouldn't say nothing. Might give him some ideas. <laughs> But I get I guarantee you if the white man started doing that, I guarantee you those Indians will say, oh hell no. Cause the first thing they're thinking, damn, I can't become I can't keep this bit, I can't be a billionaire if the white man's on my ass. But I couldn't help but notice, and that was in Orlando, Florida. They called them black. Not brown, not Indian, not even Guyanese, black. And the girl looked like a Somali, to be honest with you. But they were vicious criminals. So, you had the COVID. That brainwashed people. You know, they kept saying black people need to get first dibs because other people are taking up the uh, precious uh, uh, vaccine. But of course, there were some of us out here who are like, man, fuck that. I ain't taking shit. But other people were so terrified that they said, damn, this is how they get you. I guess I better do it. Because who knows what might happen if I don't do it. <laughs> and I know that's how you were thinking. Then they had their control support agents online arguing the same shit. You better take it. Not one. Well, some of us did ask the question. Why are these motherfuckers so emotional over this shit? If they're not a part of the motherfucking government. Why are you worried about it? Who cares if you take it or not? Went to a doctor. They asked me if I took a flu shot. I said, nah, man, what the fuck do I need that for? Now, I went to a chiropractor years ago. He, he, he said, don't take a flu shot. Doctors offer you the flu shot. I'm like, what the fuck do I need that for? I only had the flu maybe three, four times in my entire life. And two of those times, I'm not even sure if it was the actual flu or not. <laughs> and I said, shit, three or four times I, 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 I dealt with the shit. Yeah, it was it was uh, uh, an experience to say the least. But God damn it, once the shit is over, who gives a fuck? I mean, the fuck, man. I'm I'm the type of person who I don't need no painkillers, especially some heroin based uh, <laughs> opioid painkillers. Look out for people who like painkillers. I was on the job, man. 
I'm fucking smoking weed. Yeah, man. I, I had some pain, car accident and shit. So I got to smoke the weed to ease the pain. And I'm like, white guy, by the way. I'm like, yeah, right. So he was allowed to come to the job smelling like weed and shit. I said, motherfucker, how long? I'm, I'm, I didn't say it to him. I'm thinking to myself, how long does it take to ease the motherfucking pain? Is it, is it going to be a lifelong pain? Well, you have to keep on smoking uh, weed all the fucking time. <laughs> you know, it's bullshit. So, that's another, whether the shots were pl placebos or not, or the real thing with some long-term effects, it's still a mind control experiment. How can we pressure people into taking it because legally they couldn't force you to take it but they try to pressure you socially and economically speaking you remember years ago when I, when I would talk about reparations I said if they gave it to us they can get slick and they can raise the cost of living well see after this COVID shit that was a, a fucking let me open this shit this is foggy in this motherfucker now I have to wipe this shit down after I get out. But anyway, I said um, that was a slick way of raising the cost of living. That's what they did. Because there's no reason shit should double in price, triple in price. But that's what they wanted to do. That was the goal. See, every time there's a big event, there's always a main goal that they don't emphasize or even tell the public. But increasing the cost of living is one thing. So that means the poor who were suffering already suffer even more. And even the people who are well off to being extremely well off, they don't argue because they're like, well, I got more than enough money, so it ain't really hurting my pockets. They don't argue now. But if something were to happen that would affect their pockets as a result of that, like losing their fucking jobs, <laughs> then they'll get concerned. But they don't mind paying $9 for a Big Mac, uh, 2 or $3 for a 2 liter soda. You know, the only thing that I noticed that didn't really rise was fucking ice cream. Which I found funny. Because you remember eggs rose in price at one time. Milk. Now they, now they basically get back to giving eggs away again. See I didn't believe that eggs should cost that much. And they were scarce. Because chickens lay so many fucking eggs. It ain't funny. They got more than enough eggs out here. Um, soda is virtually doubled in price, so I don't even drink the shit really like that, to be honest with you. Bottled water doubled in price almost, but if you know where to go, keep looking, you can find some water. I see some white people, certain stores I go to, I'm going to give you one hint. If you got an acne around your way, that's one store. I see white people going in buying gallons and gallons of that shit that's why it's hard to go in and find that shit because it's like it's gone like I said I don't have a minivan so I just can't load the shit up with everything I mean I probably could buy more than what I get but then I gotta drag the shit all in the house like that shit anyway bottom line is stay away from shit you don't even need anyway cause the, the car uh, see you shouldn't be buying shit if water was a dollar a gallon. Now it's two dollars a gallon or two fifty. There's no re no reason in the world that it should be two fifty a gallon. It's the same water, the same plastic bottle, same shipping. Soda used to be a dollar for two liters. <laughs> Even on sale, it would be a dollar for two leaves. See, they got gotten slick. I've been watching these prices at Stop and Shop. The 7-Up sodas used to be, when it was on sale, I think it was 
five for five bucks. Then it was four for five bucks. They let they, they let that marinate for a while. Looked in there the other day, literally the other day. Because every now and then, you know, I kind of want a soda every now and then. But I can go years without a soda, to be honest with you. So I said, let me see what's on sale. Now the 7-Up is 3 for $5. And that's supposed to be a bargain. A sale bargain. They're crazy. I said, nope, I'm not doing it. So now you spend 5 bucks, and it's a sale. A sale thing. Now you only get 3 2-liter bottles of soda when you used to be able to get 4. I'm not falling for that. I, I see a lot of people are not fucking with that shit because I see the soda shells. That's one product I can say that people seem to be saying, man, motherfuck that. Fuck a soda. I ain't paying these prices for no goddamn soda. And even Burger King, as I was talking about earlier, fast food places. Their prices is double. Burger King, Burger King used to be the cheapest one. Now their prices are double. You get a, a Whopper. How much that shit cost? I think this shit costs like nine bucks by itself. They gotta be sick. Ghost Whopper, eleven bucks. Crazy. I be goddamn. And I made some spaghetti. Looking for some uh, ground beef. Looked at that. I'm like, damn. If I wanted two pounds, went to BJ's. You go. You get two pounds <clears throat> of a prepackaged kind, not that roll. I don't buy that shit with the roll. <clears throat> the, the shit in the tray not the store one but you know separate manufacturer used to be $9.99 for 2 pounds now the shit is 12 bucks so I'm like man fuck that principle you just can't keep buying shit just because you want it don't buy it they're forced to lower the price I went to three different stores, I think it was yesterday, looking for ground beef at a reasonable price. If I wanted, I believe it was, I don't know how many pounds, I didn't look at the weight, but you know those big uh, ones, you know they were at least 12 bucks, 15 bucks, 17 dollars and shit, I'm like, that's for the 80%. <clears throat> And I don't know if you know it, but they probably got even the 93% is probably the same thing as the 80%. And Stop and Shop had their brand of the organic uh, shit, grass fed shit and those little uh, pouches things. I said, well, that looks very fatty. I realized with hamburger meat, they got to be ground twice. That's what the better ones uh, are. So I look at the date on the prepackaged ones. That shit said it expired back in September. I'm like, they still got this shit out here trying to get people to buy this shit and the shit expired. All of them ex uh, expired in September. So they try to find that sucker. Now, the shit is like airtight package, but still, if the shit on the package says it expires in September, that means that that's a, only as good as it can be. I said, they should be ashamed of themselves. Now, the one I bought expires on the 17th of November. I said, fuck that. They had ground turkey on sale. So I brought a pound of ground turkey, pound of uh, hamburger, and just mixed the shit together to make me some, not meatball, but some type of ground, you know, meat sauce type shit to go on the spaghetti. Because uh, the meatballs take away from shit, to be honest with you. I forgot to put salt in the motherfucker, but you know, it is what it is. But you gotta have control. But the ice cream on sale is <laughs> fucking crazy. Still at reasonable prices for the ice cream. So, all these actions, when you review history, it seems like they're trying to devise great ways to take us out. COVID is a great way. And if they do it again, because I honestly believe it might have been a placebo. 
just to see who's going to do it. Because if you notice, in order to get that, you know you get you got to be registered, even if it's free. They got to have your name, age. They'll mark down your race. Oh yeah, I'm, speaking of race, let me finish that story on those uh, Indians. No, yeah, I think I did finish it. But you can uh, go check them out. And I always say that they mix in other people's uh, race with our statistics, and they make us look bad. That's that's the bottom line. Any other time, they're gonna call an East Indian an Asian. But since these are double homicide uh, uh, people and criminals from originally from Queens <laughs> and went down to Orlando to raise hell. And one, of, one of them, like one of these Jamaicans I used to know in school. They all got similar looks, I noticed. I think that's what you see in Jamaica. At, yeah, see in Queens. That's where they're from. You see all those uh, black ass... Uh, Almost all uniform color black ass. Uh, I guess they, they might be Guyanese too. East Indian types. All around. I'm like, God damn. Ton of them. Brown my ass. Uh, you, you motherfuckers are black, but motherfucker be black when you get caught. I mean, did you correct the, uh, the prison system and tell them, hey, I ain't black? Come on. But... We, 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 get, we got to be live. I, I mean, if it's the best way to do things, like I say, the best way to steal is not to go in a store with a gun. That's the worst way. You got to use your mind and you trick people like Tariq Nasheed. That's how you do it. Bankers and all these other people. You get people to believe in church and religion that what you're doing helps you out. So give the money up so it can help you out. That's what the vaccine would do. But, and that's where the media and all that politicians, entertainers, support agents to help sell it. But, You should have done like me and a few other people and asked yourself a question. What, did, what do I need this for if I'm not sick? Oh, it's in case you get sick so you won't die. But most people don't die. So what do I need it for? Simple questions, you know. A lot of people don't ask because they feel the pressure from society. Jim Jones, his victims, felt the pressure. My God, they're coming to get us. They don't like our sanctuary, people. Let's do this. Drink the Kool-Aid. Take, take us out. Take us to heaven. Some people on the Jim Jones thing, they did say, well, why? And some of them got killed. And some did escape. In a way, it's a miracle that some escape so they can tell the story. And if it wasn't recorded like that shit, motherfuckers probably wouldn't believe the shit. <laughs> but it was recorded so it could be studied for the effects of, of how affected the brainwashing was. No, and, and don't forget, Jim Jones, he had... That, this is what they said. They said he had drugs that only the government and CIA would have. And back to the Atlanta child murders. Was it really ever solved? I didn't know that Wayne Williams was never charged with those fucking murders, but they say he's the man who did it. Now, I, maybe I got to look at his other interviews and see if he admitted to killing the uh, adults, which he probably didn't admit to. And if he did, then they're working with something. A possibility, but no matter what, it's been over 40 years. You just can't pin something on somebody 
and convict them of, of, of some shit that you didn't charge them with. It's like with Lee Harvey Oswald. He killed Kenny. That's what they tell you. He was charged with it. But as you know, nobody ever put anything on him because they knew he was going to be a dead man. That's why. And I got me some serious theories about who Oswald was. And I might have to put him out because right now, God damn it, it looks like they're never going to tell the truth. But whatever the case is, it's, it's very steamy in here. I mean, it was fucking cold as fuck last night in this morning into the 20s. And then as the day warmed up, 50 fucking degrees, almost. I think it's 44, I think. In the car, hotter. I'm like, man, this is shit that's hard to get used to. But anyway, with that being said, I would like for us to think about it, but it looks like the war is still on and it's a never ending war. And when you add into the, the fact that the East Indians, anybody from another country can come here live it up not be questioned about what they're doing not being stereotyped you look at that police activity uh channel or any channel with police uh uh video body cam when the suspects are black people in the comments they always say the same shit typical these people this is their culture culture of crime even when the suspects are Caribbean, they just call them black Americans because it fits their agenda. Those Indians, Guyanese I was telling you about, people would say, oh, they're black. Then they would say, no, they're not. But then people would say, well, in their arrest record, it says black. Now what? See, when the white man speaks, now you can't say anything now. So, it has never ended. And I asked to anybody, if we were gone, does that make the world a better place? If we're gone, is there peace on earth? Did the white man create weapons, nuclear weapons and guns for us? Poison gas. Did he make that shit for us? <laughs> That's how you address them. But the coon agents, they're the main problem. So with that, I am out. It's hot for some hot. Well, I guess because I'm in the car, warmed up. Damn. All right, so with that, I'm out.